My name is Dr. Reed Ferber. I'm an associate professor in the Faculty of Kinesiology at the University of Calgary. I'm the director of the Running Injury Clinic there as well. We're at the Austin Convention Center in Austin, Texas at the running event and I've just uh, given a talk on footwear prescription and gait analysis to um, running, running store employees. The second part of the talk we talked about orthotics and trying to apply the same paradigm in terms of what's going on with respect to the arch and uh, overall foot mechanics and we talked about different research that we had done on uh, the two ends of the spectrum in terms of people with very flexible and very stiff feet and some of the research that we've done um, trying to understand the interrelationship between strength, injury and overall biomechanics. At the end we tried to uh, bring a little research and understand the uh, paradigm of, of minimalist footwear or barefoot running and really what's the research behind that in terms of injury causation or injury prevention and, and really there is no research behind that right now. There's only research to show that when you run with a four foot strike, you run different than with a rear foot strike. One footfall is not like the next and that cannot be fixed by a shoe necessarily for the broader population. But when we start talking about orthotics, there are some situations where orthotics can be very helpful in a specific segment. So again, back to our paradigm of typical foot mechanics. Um, we wanted to put this in the paradigm of a non-controlling orthotic is going to function just fine for 85% of the population. So it can be a custom orthotic that's not posted meaning there's no materials to minimize motion. It can be comfortable and it can simply accommodate to the foot, but only 15% of the population needs some type of control of their foot. Okay? Now, as I mentioned, we did a systematic review back in 2007 and really nothing's been published that would warrant another systematic, a systematic review takes about a year where you compile all the literature together and really try to come up with what are the conclusions of orthoses. So we know that they're very effective. We know that they control the rear foot, they control rotation of the lower leg, absolutely, but most of the research has been done on healthy subjects. So most of the labs that have done the bulk of the orthotics research have done it on graduate students and undergraduate students. And there's actually very little research on, on uh, clinical populations and I'm just as guilty as the rest. So we're trying to do more research in terms of orthoses and prescription of the proper orthotic as a combination of treatment. Then again, most research, as we talked about earlier in that upper figure, most research has modeled the, the foot as a single segment. So we applied our multi-segment foot model and we wanted to know what is the foot doing inside the shoe? It's kind of a fundamental question. And certainly some research has looked at has put markers on the heel and cut little windows in the shoe itself, but we wanted to look at what's the midfoot doing, what's the forefoot doing. So I guess we cut extra holes. And uh, I just had a, I had a very bright biomedical engineering student uh, work with me on this project, project. So this, actually I'm very pleased, this paper was just accepted uh, last month. But if we take a look at arch structure, what we actually want to do is to look at what's the effect of orthoses on these two ends of the spectrum. So, uh, play with me just for a little bit here. It took a really long time to find these people. We're talking about 2% of the population down at that end of the spectrum and 2% at this end of the spectrum. So people whose feet deformed more than 12 millimeters and people whose feet deformed less than two millimeters. So it took quite a while to find these two groups of individuals. This has actually been done by Rob Butler as well, who came out of the University of Delaware where I did a fellowship and he looked at these, this end of the spectrum and that end of the spectrum in terms of, of putting them in the wrong shoe as well and, and the results are, are somewhat similar. So I'm just going to talk about pes planus. So somebody with a very flat, very flexible foot. So for that 2% of the population that has a very flat and a very flexible foot, if you put an orthotic underneath, it will stiffen the forefoot and significantly reduce that rotation. It will stabilize the midfoot and prevent collapse and it will create a rigid lever from the time the foot reaches contact with the ground to help in propelling that person forward. 
So a custom orthotic absolutely functions well with that segment of the population, with that flat, flexible foot. Absolutely. We don't know what it does to variability of runners in terms of variability of movement, because again, these were healthy runners involved in this study. But we know that orthoses have, have a role to play in that respect. So what do over-the-counter devices do? Well, nobody's ever actually researched over-the-counter devices, and there's a lot of them that are available, you know, starting back with Dr. Scholl's, and then certainly um, Soul and Superfeet and PowerStep, and there's a number of, of products that are out there. And we wanted to answer some other relevant questions. So we measured uh, medial longitudinal, longitudinal arch collapse is the angle created by these three markers here, which are on specific anatomical landmarks. And then if we calculate the distance from that marker to that marker, and that change in length, that gives us, a, from a bioengineering standpoint, that mimics the, the uh, pathway of the plantar fascia itself. Now, I just want to make one point clear here. When the foot comes down flat and you accept maximum body weight at mid-stance, the arch is as collapsed as it will get. Okay? So arch collapse occurs at mid-stance. The plantar fascia continues to be stretched up until toe-off. So these two points continue to move away from one another until the foot comes off the ground. Does that seem reasonable to everybody? Okay. And the reason I, I bring that up is we'll just talk about the results here uh, in just a moment. Well, we wanted to look at over-the-counter orthotics with typical, uh, the typical uh, part of the population. We didn't want to look at um, people with the pes cavus or the flat feet uh, because, again, most runners who are buying these products we're just trying to answer a practical question. What is this product doing in, in, in terms of their foot? And we also wanted to answer a simple question in terms of what happens in the molding process. So this is specifically with a sole orthotic. This is one of the first studies we did, we did with them. So we have uh, molded on the, on, the, um, on the left and non-molded straight out of the package on the right. Well, these devices, they have a cambered uh, rear foot. There's no posting at all, so we wouldn't expect it to control rear foot motion. Sure enough, it doesn't. There's only about a, a quarter of a degree change in rear foot motion. It doesn't control the arch deformation either. It, it, in other words, it lets the foot do whatever it wants to do, which in my opinion is a very good thing because these are people who have typical foot mechanics. But what it does is it reduces plantar fascia strain by about 34% on average. So if I have somebody come to my clinic and they have any type of lower leg problem as part of the prescription for them, including flexibility and strengthening, we recommend some type of orthotic device just to control the plantar fascia, take the strain off of it, and allow these muscles to get stronger. So it becomes part of our standard of care now because I know that this device doesn't control the foot at all. It just lets the foot do whatever it wants. And I also know that the, the, the molding process works. There's about a 23% decrease in strain straight out of the box, but it actually does mold to the foot to produce greater decreases in strain. So we've recently, so these are very preliminary data, but we recently conducted a, another study looking at sole versus superfeet versus power step. And we've submitted this as an abstract. We're just finishing off the full data analysis as well. So sole, uh, we had a repeat of the results. So it doesn't control rear foot, it does not control arch, and it has about a 30, 35% reduction in strain for this group of, of typical individuals. Superfeet has very similar results. Superfeet orthoses do not control rear foot motion, they do not control uh, arch deformation, and they do have an effect on reducing plantar fascia strain as well. And then the power step uh, device doesn't really have an influence um, at all in terms of rear foot arch or strain. So these three devices that are commonly available, I feel confident telling a patient, well, we want to reduce plantar fascia strain, so these are your choices. I don't want to control your foot. You choose whichever one you find most comfortable, whether it be super feet or sole. Uh, power step um, doesn't have much to do in terms of, of uh, reducing plantar fascia strain. It's just not constructed in, in the same manner as the other two products. Um, but what I do know is that they don't function to minimize foot motion. And this is the first study looking at different over-the-counter devices as well, just trying to bring a little bit of, of science into the marketing side of things. So what do over-the-counter orthotics do? 
Well, for the, major for the majority of the population, they do not control rear foot motion, and they reduce plantar fascia strain, these two products in particular. So again, from an injury prevention or prescription standpoint, this, be <coughs> this becomes part of the standard of care. So what's our take home message on, ortho on orthoses? Well, again, I'm trying to beat that horse dead. So most people will exhibit typical foot mechanics, eight out of 10 patients, an over-the-counter device is gonna work just fine. They do not need to go to a $500 custom-made device. In fact, if I have a patient who falls within that 2% of the population, and I think that they need a custom device, I'll recommend that they get an over-the-counter device first just to see if it's helpful. And if it is helpful, stick with it because we're also giving them strengthening and stretching and a number of other, putting them in the correct footwear as well. For a pes planus, very mobile foot, that's like that 15 to 2 to 15% of the population, custom orthoses will work perfectly. It will stabilize. It's meant to control foot motion. But make these recommendations based on the evidence. And again, the evidence is that most people, 85% of the population, have foot mechanics that do not need to be controlled.